And how many times do we see that in the Christian life where we've been sent here for a reason, yet when we forsake the feet of Jesus, we tend to get off course, off mission. We're not fulfilling what heaven requires. And so we have to live with that mindset that, listen, this life, this world, the things of this world, they're going to pass away one day. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Jesus is going to wrap up this age. So what matters is eternity. What matters is, am I, am I fulfilling the purpose that God has for me? And there's only one way that we can make sure we fulfill the purpose of Christ is to stay at His feet. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. So that's what he's saying. He's saying, I've been crucified with Christ. He's identifying with what Christ went through. When Christ died upon the cross, he's saying, I, Paul, died upon the cross. But now when Christ resurrected, Paul never resurrected. What happened was he now became one with Christ. So now his, the life he lives, he lives in faith in the Son of God. But the key here is, I believe, the end of the verse. How can Paul say, I'm crucified with Christ? Because he understood this. The Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He understood the mission of Jesus. He understood the love of Jesus. And listen, if you want to get to this place where you're at the feet of Jesus and you can abandon everything to him, you have to know that he loves you and that he gave himself for you. Them that, listen, we have a, the cross represents two sides. The cross represents how much God hates sin because it cost him his son. Like that, God does not just wink at sin and say, it's okay. This whole concept of only God can judge me and God's okay, He knows my heart, that is completely unbiblical. God hates sin so much that He sent His Son to die, to appease sin, because, his, because God Himself was the only one who could do it. But the cross also shows the love of God because it showed how much he was wanting to have relationship and fellowship and, and, and a place in your life. So the cross shows his hatred for sin, but it shows his great love that he was willing to give of himself just to bring you back into the kingdom. Now this place of at the feet of Jesus, it is not just a visit, it's to abide. And the posture is that as a result of what he's done, we lay our life down at the feet of him say I give you everything this is all for you Jesus that's the posture that's the posture of a Christian you have everything for me Jesus because you know he's your life source he's the one that supplies the good and he's the one that helps you get through the bad he's everything but I tell you the most of the times when it came to coming to the feet of Jesus and being intimate with him it was on purpose it was a discipline it was a practice it was a choice that I'm going to show up here and I know it's hard on my flesh and I know my flesh doesn't want to be here because your flesh doesn't want to submit to God but I'm gonna to choose to be here because you have to allow the love of God to begin to break through that self-sufficiency to where you realize he's and so for the people who rebel against God that's where they go. That's the gospel, that there is a one way. It's Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. He is not just the one you jump on to get to a destination. Jesus is the destination. Without Christ, there is no Christianity. It's just another religion. He's the reason that makes Christianity the one true, the one true thing to follow. And I heard a minister say this, because uh, sometimes you'll hear preachers say this, you got to turn your mind off. You ain't never going to turn your mind off. It'll never, you don't have an on and off switch, it's only on. But you have to learn how to direct your mind. You have to learn how to focus your mind. You have to learn how to say, my mind is not omnipotent. It is not all powerful. It can be conditioned. And so I'm going to practice to condition my thoughts. And one thing that Brother Lawrence said in his book that I believe was just so powerful, he said this. He said, I don't discourage myself when my mind wanders. I simply repent and I return right back to that place of thinking upon Him. I think as Christians, sometimes we beat ourselves up too much. We're far more judging over ourselves than I believe God is sometimes. Now, if it's blatant sin, it's blatant sin. 
But when it comes to the process of growing with him and loving him and learning how to abide, he is patient, he's kind, he's willing to work with us. And sometimes we got to realize God's not mad at me because I missed it. If I repent and I get right, his blood covers it. And let me begin to now focus back in. Because if you're not careful, we let condemnation come in. We let ourselves feel the guilt and the shame. And then now we don't want to run to the one who would free us because we feel like we've broken his trust way too many times. Humility is the soil. Right. If you think about it, the ground, the soil, humility is the soil out of which everything in the kingdom grows. Christ humbled himself. That was his first act. He humbled himself and came down from heaven in the form of a baby. So humility is what the ground. Listen, humility will soften the ground. Your dependency, your absolute abandonment to God will soften the ground where if there's roots in your life, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousies, envies, competition, comparison, if there's lust, anger, humility softens the ground where the Lord can just easily pluck up that root. Where it occurs. This is the aim of the Christian life. It is to be like Christ. What did uh, the book of Acts says this, as the disciples were coming, they said, they're mere men. They're just normal. They're just casual. They don't have an education. They don't have the, the written requirements and accolades that the Pharisees have. They're just mere. They're common. But they knew they had been with Jesus. Jesus, when you f- stay at the feet of Jesus, it stamps something upon your life. The true definition of a Christian is one who lives, loves, and talks like Christ. It is to have the Christ-like inward that begins to reflect outward. Now, this is the key you have to realize about holiness. Holiness is not your separate, separate or to be set apart, but to be set apart so that you can be set unto. Okay. You're pulled out so that now you can be pulled into something. So holiness is to be separate from the world, the way the world thinks, the, the concepts of the world. To be holy is, listen, you've already are holy. The Bible says you've been translated, separated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his marvelous light. That is what we call that step of holiness where you are holy. Your spirit is holy. But there is a progressive work of holiness called sanctification, where you begin to be conformed more into the image of Christ, where everything that Jesus did in you when you got saved, you begin to walk more of it out. You have all of the life of God that Christ has in your spirit because your spirit is joined with him. But we have to learn how to walk this thing out to where that life begins to just pour out of us at a more rapid rate and a more uh, place of surrender to where now we're living out more of that life, more of that holiness than we did before. The course of this world does is it's gonna try to desensitize you when it comes, this does not change. If culture changes, it doesn't change the word of God. You're going to be considered an outcast if you abide by this word because they're going to call you outdated. They're going to call you extreme. They're going to call you religious. They're going to say everything they can, but you have to stay fixed to this word because this is the standard. You don't bend the word. If you bend the word, you're compromising. Listen, all deception is at least 70% truth. Now we have the blatant obvious, that's bad. But when it comes to the deception of the last days, it's going to mix truth in there. It's going to seem biblical. It's going to sound right. It's going to have scripture to partly prove it. But there's going to be an error. There's going to be a slither of error in there that if you're not at the feet of Jesus and that absolute abandonment, you can fall into deception. The Bible says that the last days are shortened lest the elect are deceived. Because if you're not at his feet, you're not in that place where you can hear his voice and you can see his gaze and you can see the image being conformed in you to where you can get off. If it is not done deep within you, godliness, Christ likeness, holiness, it's just a mask. If godliness is does not take place in here, it is just a mask. There has to be something done in here. There has to be something in the heart where, Lord, I just want to be lived pure. Lord, I just want to serve you. Lord, I just want to be abandoned before you. And it's not just rhetoric. It's not just words. You've got to literally get your heart to this place where it's pouring itself out, to where it says, this is all I want, Jesus. I don't care how bad it hurts. I don't care what I got to lay down. I don't care what friends I got to lose, what jobs I got to turn down. I want to get to the place, Lord, to where this is a deep work within me, to where I am abandoned at your feet. I am dependent upon you and I am made in your image. Whatever it takes, Lord. 
And you got to be at his feet. And that's not just the first time you get before him. He's not just going to burn that in you. That is something where you're, you're, you're being consistent. You're practicing abiding. And then one day he just does something where he, he births the depths of fellowship of Christ in your spirit. If you want to have the walk with Christ that all of you desire, there has to remain this place where you're at the feet of Jesus, denying yourself daily, picking up your cross, going to Him, saying, not my will today, Lord, but yours. So this place of abandonment, it has three steps. One, you forget the past. If you cannot forget the past, you cannot step into a place of full abandonment. Number two, you have to trust Him with your future. And number three, you have to submit your present fully to Him. So that number one, forget your past. Number two, sub, uh, give trust Him with your future. And number three, submit your present to Him fully. Scriptures, the prayer I prayed many times, I would always say this before the Lord. Lord, let the guardrails of my life be holiness and humility. Let me never venture outside of being separated unto you and separated from the world. And let me never venture into spiritual pride, but let me stay humble and holy and let those guard my life. Let those be the path that be the guardrails that form my path towards my purpose in you. And, and you, you, you keep this conversation with God. You know, you keep this place. And out of that, there came a, a craving for God. And as, as you hear me pray, sometimes you'll hear me pray, Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be craved. You're worthy to be given all the honor and the glory. And that, that crave, it's not just some flamboyant, nice word. I, I, it was birthed out of this place where I was craving him. I was craving his heart. I was craving his presence. I was, I was craving the place where, Lord, just be everything to me and do everything you want to do in me. I don't care what it costs. Just be everything. I need to know you. It's this desire that says, God, I have to know you. And I don't know you. I know you more than I knew you yesterday. And I'm so thankful and grateful. But, Lord, I don't know you like I can know you. So take me more to that depth and that place. And so that brings me to these two things right here that I want to leave with you. Number one, total surrender brings total infilling and total submission brings total fellowship. Total surrender brings total infilling and total submission brings total fellowship. And when you are emptied before the Lord, you are now able to be fully filled by Him. When you are fully empty before the Lord, you can now be fully filled by Him. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. I'm just going to pray for you those who are listening online and those who are in the room. I believe the Lord is going to do mighty things this year. I believe the Lord's going to do mighty things in your lives this year. I really fully believe this. We are, are going to experience days of glory, days of heaven on earth this year. But He is doing something deep within us this start of this year. And I believe there is a place right now God is calling us. Yes, there's things to do for me. But if you just come right back and sit at my feet, your cares, your worries, the things you're going through, they will change and they will shift. If you sit at my feet and pour out your life as an offering, as a sacrifice, to be a sweet aroma, to saturate the Son of Man. So, Lord, I'm praying that, Father, today for those who have never felt that cry, that burn, that desire, Father, I pray today you would impart that hunger, that you would impart that desire, that you would impart that within the depths of their heart to seek your face and to seek you and to lay at your feet, Lord, and to let you begin to heal and to mend and to take care of, to let you patch up the things that need to be patched up, to whisper the words that are sweeter than honey into their ears of love and joy and peace that they'd find you Jesus in the depths of abandonment knowing 
they'll find the fullness of fellowship. Jesus. Holy Spirit, make it so real. Make it so real. Make it so real, Holy Spirit, in their lives, Lord, that they'll never be the same, that they'll take this step into the greater purpose and the greater depth and the greater Christ-likeness and godliness. Jesus. Those even who are listening online, you would fill with the very Spirit of God. Rejuvenate first love. Rejuvenate passion. Rejuvenate desire. Rejuvenate hunger. Draw, Jesus, right now, draw to the foot of the cross, to the spotless Lamb of God. 